This time for the Ross Nuan. Ross. Well, there's a, a short prayer and I can use the next speaker. Sure. Uh, okay. Get
I didn't understand much about politics. I didn't understand much about my own environment I was living in. All I knew was my mom would cook, I would eat, I would go to school, come home and play, go to school the next day, eat again. But certain things started to drive home. As my eyes got open, I got maturer, I started to see Liberia in different spectrums. My father was a medical doctor, my mom a midwife nurse, and so growing up in a medical home, I wanted to be a medical doctor myself. And so all my primary, secondary education, I wanted to be a doctor. Then the war came. It shot up my dream, my opportunity. I should have gone to Russia to do medicine right after high school. That was not possible. So I said, OK, then I started studying theology in school. Doing the vanity, I want to preach to people to win their souls for Christ. As I was going to school, then April 6th war happened in 1996. My experience in that war changed my perspective. Then I said, okay, since I couldn't be a doctor, I'm already saved. I can preach the gospel whenever and wherever I go. But I think I need to prepare myself to contribute more significantly to Liberia. That's how I went into government. Now here I am, with people like you, who have traveled from far, with the vision, the dream, the aspiration you have, including the very Liberians, who are waiting to come home because of what they can contribute. When I read about multinational companies that operated in our country, for many years. I grew up in Bong Mines, where one of the richest and most powerful mining company operated, German owned, operated and exploited the mountains for 36 years. 36 years, billions of long ton of iron ore left our country. During that time, I also understand that in another part of Liberia, Bormi, Western Liberia, the purest iron ore in the world came from that place. The purest iron ore with the iron content of 68 to 70 percent pure iron. How was that discovered? Liberia was used as a base, an air base for the American army during World War II. Most of you who know the Liberian history know what I'm talking about. And as, because you couldn't fly from the United States across the Atlantic Ocean to go and bomb in Europe. So Africa, Liberia, was a strategic place. So we became a strategic ally to the United States, or the Allied Forces. And so the planes used to come here from the James Springs P airfield, pick up, fly over the Sahara Desert, go and bomb in Europe, and turn around and come back. It was a shorter distance. As one of the pilots pick up from the airport, flying over the bombing range, his compact deflected in the plane because of the magnetism that came from the mountain. So he couldn't continue his trip. He turned around, came back, and reported that I couldn't continue my mission because there was a strong magnetism from the area that I flew over. There was a mountain range. And my compact deflected. And based on that report, by the war ended in 1945, by 1950, President William V. S. Topman then organized through the American partners that over 50 engineers, explorers,
to come here, travel in the butchers of Liberia, do their prospecting, and they find out that the iron content here was very pure. First in the world. By 1952, we had all over two billion tons of iron ore traveling out of here. Then there is a place called Bokon Jede in Sandal County. I used to work in a bank. The IB, International Bank now, used to be called the International Trust Company of Liberia. That company controlled the maritime program for over 54 years. While I was employed in that bank, there was an organization called Freedom Go that came in this country, arranged their concession however way they did, and they had a license to prospect for one year in Bokonjili. I'm just giving you a highlight of what Liberia is like. And in 12 months of their prospecting, when they came, they had only four vehicles. In 12 months of their prospecting, they were able to purchase 36 brand new vehicles that cost over $50,000 each. They used to travel out with mayonnaise jar full of gold in this country. So I like what the brother said, that Liberia sits on trillions of dollars of mineral. In the uh, mid 90s, uh, let's say late 90s, early 2000, I think 2000 or 2001, a company came here and started prospecting our offshore oil deposits and realized that Liberia had over 50 billion barrels of crude oil deposit offshore. With the diamonds in Wesua, Gofa, Baapolu, Margibi, Nimba, Bomb, with the gold in Sino County. Right now, as I speak to you, the export reports show that Bear Mountain have been extracting gold worth of $13 million per week out of one county. I think some of you travel there today. Okay, Mount. One county is producing $13 million worth of gold per week. Multiply by four, multiply by 12. It's almost equivalent to our national budget per year. One county out of 15. So then, what am I doing in America? If my country is so rich, so wealthy, so beautiful, at a certain point, in, by 1952, between 52 and uh, the 60s, Liberia already had the third largest economy on the continent of Africa. The unfortunate thing about it is, those of our sons and daughters who were in power, who had the opportunity to make sound managerial decisions to develop our country, failed. Liberia could be beautiful, more beautiful than Dubai. Liberia could be the enclave, a special place so endowed with wealth and beautiful in this part of the world. So we know what this country is capable of. When you talk about Pan-Africanism, I share your aspiration. I do think that Africa must be for Africans. That's why I acknowledge your effort, Mr. Makala. Africans, Africa for Africans. And uh, you have the Black African Investment Organization, BIO. Infrastructure. Huh? Infrastructure. Infrastructure Organization. The Black African Infrastructure Organization, BIO, incorporated in Liberia. And then you have the Africa for, um, for the Africans tour and investment by Mr. Bomani. It's right here. God bless you, my brother.
execution. And all of you who have been doing something to make Africa, to change the narrative of Africa, make Africa to glow on the continent, especially selecting Liberia, it's very important. Very important for us, black people, Liberians, all of us who have seen, and the other day I was, I came across a guy, an African American guy who said that he, for some reason, just identified with Liberia. Among other countries on the continent, Liberia is his home. He does not have a mother or father here, but he said he's going to retire in Liberia. And in 2017, the story that I started with, I came here with a white woman who said, John, when I go, I retire, I want to come back here and live the rest of my life in Liberia. I said, why? She said, because Liberia is special. I just felt connected to this country. And then hearing all the stories about this country, I think this is a place to be. It may not be too attractive when you are driving in the streets, you know, but I tell you the truth, Liberia is a place to position yourself. Before I end my statement, I want to talk about positioning. They got a statement that says, success comes to those who are prepared for opportunity. If you are not prepared for the opportunity, when the opportunity comes, you can't use it. What's important is how you position yourself for that opportunity. And I think Liberia is a place to position yourself because it is so potential for investment. It is so potential. The blessing is that we have a government now that is proactive, that is robust, that has the political will to support any kind of investment. And so ladies and gentlemen, just to share a few words with you, I want to thank you for the opportunity you've given me to be here to share these words. I invited my sister-in-law, who spent 32 years of her life in London, since Bindu, sitting right there. I'm going to close with this. She told me a story that said where she used to work. This boss of hers called a party. And in his yard, he had Bentley, he had Lamborghini, he had all the expensive cars, and an elaborate table spread out full of food. And when the son of the man saw her and asked her, Where are you from? She said, I'm from Liberia. He said, Oh, Liberia. And she saw the expression on his face. He said, Well, what are you doing here? She said, What do you mean? I live here, and I'm working for your dad. He said, Look, I'll show you something. Everything you see around here, this house, the cars, everything you see is from Liberia. Our wealth that we enjoy here in London is from Liberia. If I were you, I would not leave Liberia. There she sits today. She has come back home, want to be here, want to invest here. So if you are coming to support any kind of initiative, we want to thank you for coming and considering Liberia as your place. God bless you. Thank you. The Honorable John Fellows, a big friend and brother. Okay, thank you for that. That was really inspiring. Okay, next.